of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Nightmare Commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's, at drive time, 3 till 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB Plus on the Smart Speaker app and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, all you have to say is, Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's, on GB News and GB News Radio. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten tonight. Has Fishy Rishi given up? His senior MPs apparently have, with a former Conservative cabinet minister suggesting the Tories need to lose the next election, with one describing it an extinction level event. Unsurprisingly, Sipri Starmer smells blood. Ireland and Scotland ministers are all united against more house building in their areas. You can tell from his answer, not answer, his body language, he's actually given up. Yeah. He's given up. I'll issue a rallying call for the Tory fight back to start with or without Sunak to stop Britain becoming a socialist hellscape in my digest next. Then my superstar panel weigh in. And tonight I'm joined by Christine Hamilton, Adam Brooks and Nigel Nelson. Also coming up, as the eco-zealots from Just Stop Oil stop pl at play at the home of Cricket, England wicketkeeper Johnny Bairstow shows police how to handle these jobless hippies. <laughs> Nana Aque reacts to those extraordinary scenes shortly. Elsewhere tonight, as lawyers for the Mirror Group claim the Duke of Sussex is only suing tabloid newspapers as a moral crusade, not because he has any evidence, is Harry doing more harm than good by focusing on the past? Richard Fitzwilliams, Bush Rashake and Dr Tessa Dunlop due put out in the clash. Plus, Paul Burrell joins me live to react to this Bauer bombshell. Egan is in touch with Diana and that Diana... What? That Diana is assuring... Princess Diana. Princess Diana, the mother. Oh, what does her former butler and rock think 
she really would be saved to the Duchess if that were true. Paul gives his unique insight on that as well as an exclusive update on his brewing and potentially explosive legal action against the Duke of Sussex. And royal biographer Angela Levin gives her unflinching verdict on reports Meghan's rumoured memoir will unleash hell on the royal family, including possibly outing the alleged royal racists. So Arthur Sussex is about to go nuclear as their influence and popularity plummets. Angela's analysis will be unmissable as always. We'll have more blockbuster trick awards fallout too as the terrified MSM goes into complete meltdown after GB News and Nigel Farage's roaring success. But a lot of booze, Kevin. I mean, but he will revel in that. Yes, yeah. and he did. Yeah. And to be fair, I think he kind of whipped them up. Britain's favourite entertainer Jim Davidson gives his hilarious take on Susanna's sour grapes and Holly Willoughby swerving the awards as this morning lost its daytime crown. Plus Elton John's strange singing and British schoolboys skirting sexist rules on shorts. So Jim is fired up and ready to unleash on all of that later in the show. We'll have tomorrow's newspaper front pages first for you too. And a new greatest Britain Union jackass as always. This is Dan Wooten tonight. Let's go. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Now, before we get going on another action-packed show, a quick update on that gutless little weasel, Daniel Korski. Londoners should be breathing a huge sigh of relief tonight as Korski has officially pulled out of the city's mayoral race after mounting pressure over accusations by the TV producer Daisy Goodwin that he groped her... In number 10, a decade ago, he told relieved voters the pressure on my family because of this false and unproven allegation and the inability to get a hearing for my message of the London dream makes it impossible for my campaign to carry on. <laughs> London nightmare, more like. I extended a fresh invitation to Korski to come on this show tonight, but it seems he just hasn't the bottle for it. He's bottled another interview and the mayoral race, so good riddance. Fronting up for Conservative Londoners now is veteran Assembly member and favourite Susan Hall, who appeared on this show last week. And she'll be taking on the barrister and political outsider Moz Hussein, the KC, who will put his case to you live in the studio tomorrow evening. So goodbye to the gutless little weasel Korski. And we're not going to miss you here in London. My digest on why the Tories must ditch its fatalism and fight back with or without Rishi Sunak to prevent a socialist coalition from hell straight after the news headlines with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you and good evening to you. Well, the first pictures have emerged of the wreckage from the ill-fated Titan submersible. It was recovered from the sea floor of the North Atlantic today and brought ashore for the first time. If you're watching on television, you can see these new pictures showing metal debris being unloaded from the Horizon Arctic ship in St John's, Newfoundland by the Canadian Coast Guard. Uh, if you're listening on radio, we can see wiring emitting from the tail cone. We can see the titanium end caps, the landing frame and indeed the porthole. The sub suffered an implosion an hour and 45 minutes into its descent to view the wreckage of the Titanic on the ocean floor on the 18th of June. All five souls on board perished after the sub suffered a catastrophic implosion underwater. Now, news here at home, Thames Water says it's working constructively with its shareholders to secure funding amid mounting concern over its financial stability. Contingency plans are now being reportedly put together by the government, including a possible emergency nationalisation of the company. It's feared Thames Water is £14 billion in debt. Environment Minister Rebecca Powell says their 15 million customers, though, should rest assured that their water supplies will be protected. Ofcom has launched an investigation into BT after disruption to the 999 emergency call service at the weekend. The communications watchdog says it's going to look into the incident to find out whether or not the telecoms giant failed to comply with its regulatory duties. 
BT, which manages the 999 phone system, apologised sincerely for the UK-wide disruption. Now, tonight in Paris, rioting has entered its second day after a 17-year-old boy was shot dead by traffic police. 31 people have been arrested in the clashes. 2,000 people have been... Uh, 2,000 police officers, rather, have been brought into the Nanterre region to calm the situation down. Protesters have burnt out cars and uh, buildings as well. A police officer is being investigated. Yesterday, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, said the shooting was unexplainable and inexcusable. Here, three people were arrested after Just Stop oil protesters disrupted the second Ashes test match at Lords today by running onto the pitch. The England wicketkeeper, Johnny Bairstow, took matters into his own hands by picking up the protester who'd been attempting to throw orange paint powder all over the pitch, Bairstow carrying him off towards the grandstand to great applause. Another protester was removed by the security team and then ground staff were able to clear away the paint that had been dropped. Just up all saying they disrupted the match to demand action from the government on climate change. Let's just bring you a little bit of breaking news concerning Madonna, the American singer-songwriter. The superstar has postponed her tour after falling ill and being admitted to intensive care. For several days, we understand her talent manager saying Madonna developed a serious bacterial infection, which led to pausing all her show commitments. But she says, but he says rather, her health is now improving. A full recovery is expected. Madonna's now 64 years old and she was due to start her world tour next month. You're up to date on TV, online, DAB Plus Radio and the TuneIn app. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Whatever you thought of Boris Johnson, and you know I think his defenestration was driven by Ramonas to tear the Conservative Party apart, but whatever you think of him, he was a winner. A proven electoral champion against all odds, be it in Labour London versus Red Cairn, or 2019, when Theresa May risked driving the Tories into the ground. Sadly, as you know I always feared, Fishy Rishi Sunak, who lost with members before being installed as leader in an undemocratic coup, is looking increasingly like a loser. Disastrous new polling by Redfield and Wilton Strategies shows Labour on 53% of the vote in the critical red wall, with the Tories on 26%. Now, contrast that to just one year ago. So with the incessant MSM Partygate witch hunt in full force, Boris was just in, can you believe this? Look at them side by side. Just three percentage points behind Labour. The gulf now is 25%. Today in PMQ, Sunak looked defeated, fresh out of ideas, and seemingly accepting a managed decline of his party rather than fighting the socialist threat posed by a Labour Lib Dem Green SNP stitch-up. Slippery Starmer picked up on that. Look at... Fortunately for him, the Shadow Deputy Prime Minister, the Shadow Minister for Women, the Shadow Health, Justice, Defence, Business, Northern Ireland and Scotland ministers are all united against more house building in their areas. You can tell from his answer, not answer, his body language, he's actually given up. He's given up. I think he's noticed that his shadow housing secretary doesn't actually agree with his new policy of concreting over the green belt, Mr. Speaker. But it wasn't just Labour saying it. The right wing blog Guido Fawkes tweeted, Times are getting tough. Rishi looked dejected, head bowed, going through the motions unenthusiastically. Leaders get going when it gets tough. Maybe he's just not a leader. And now some senior Tories are expressing the unthinkable. They're saying the party needs to lose in order to become Conservative again. Can you believe it? One told the Daily Express's David Maddox, an ELE is coming at the next election. Now, that is the acronym, apparently, for an extinction-level event. 
And a former cabinet minister even told the newspaper the only way we can rebuild the country with conservative values is by rebuilding the conservative party first and making it conservative again. But do these people not realise the hell a hard left socialist Labour government is going to unleash on Britain with their secret mission to do all they can to tie us back to the EU again? So I think the fight back must start. Not giving up like we saw from Sunak and PMQs today. As Tim Stanley said in the Daily Telegraph this week, the Tories must fight the culture wars or die. The big problem is they've got the wrong leader to do that. And they've just allowed their winner to be hounded out of Parliament thanks to a kangaroo court. But if Rishi doesn't have this fight in him, he must be replaced by someone who does. To respond now, my superstar panel, the broadcaster and author Christine Hamilton, the businessman and activist Adam Brooks in GB News, senior political commentator Nigel Nelson. So Adam Brooks, it really did feel today like Sunak had just given up. But he knows deep down he has no chance of fighting a general election and winning. You know, we, we know... But I, I would think by October, November, they will be 30, 35 points behind in the polls. There's no going back. They've got so what, they can't win? They cannot win. It's impossible. I, I don't know anyone that wants to vote for Rishi Sunak. I won't vote for Rishi Sunak. But, but you have a theory that if they had Boris Johnson... In look, the Boris Johnson is a vote winner. I speak to people in the pub when I'm out and about, and they, are temp they, they say to me, if Boris came back, they would hold their nose and vote Conservative again. That says a lot. For some reason, he's got, a, he's got a pool that wants people, you know, that makes people want to vote for, for him. Now, they've got four ways to try and uh, even compete in a general election. It's bring Boris back. Mm. It's stop the boats uh, and this illegal immigration. It's cutting taxes drastically, both personal tax and business tax and fighting back against the woke uh, mm. and gender identity. Yeah, which is what Tim Sanders so was saying. they are the four things that, that will give them a chance. They, they still might yeah. not win, but it'd be bloody close. Well, yeah, because, but Christine Hamilton, the problem is the parliamentary party has backed a technocrat mm. who clearly doesn't feel the culture war in the same way that we do. Yeah, I, I'm afraid I, I disagree with you two. It is totally unrealistic to bring Boris back. I mean, one of the Tory party's problems is... Well, it is now. Well, then they die. Because they've got rid yeah, of it. Yeah, then well, they die. Exactly, but they have spent so. far too long over the last year navel-gazing, worrying about internal problems mm. and instead of yeah. looking towards the next second. So because I honestly, look at that poll from a year ago, I know, Christine. but I think you have... Boris to... was three points behind I and they know. wanted to finish him off and then held 25 Dan, points behind. that was then and this is now. And I think it's totally unrealistic. And frankly, it's a, it's a waste of hope to think that Boris can come back. But your other three, absolutely... No, but if, if Boris came back overnight, the polls would half. I'm telling you, just by talking it, to it, people, it, it's, they it's, would half... Mm. If, if Boris came back straight it, away. It, there is no way that can happen. It, first of all, he's not in Parliament anymore. It is not going to happen. So, but I so what we just think, accept, we just accept I think you have that Sunak's going to lead the Conservative Party into the next, to the next, this yes. disastrous extinction-level event. It's not what I want, but I think you have to accept it. I really do. And, yes, he is totally inadequate. We're in a situation now, as we were in uh, 1992, mm. when John Major should have lost that election. Mm. If the Tories had lost that election in 1992... Stop Blair. We would probably never have had mm. Blair and, and the world Labour. without Blair. But uh, this moral issue, you're quite mm. right. People say it's the economy stupid, it's the economy stupid. But people are absolutely fed up with what is a moral drift. Mm. I mean, Margaret Thatcher always used to talk about, you know, the Victorian values of a traditional society, family values, etc. Et We're losing that. We have lost all that. And if the mm. Tories lose that, and you mentioned taxes, the highest taxes for 70 years, they are sort of socialist, soggy, liberal Democrats. Yeah. They're not Tories. They don't deserve to win as Tories. N Nigel Nelson, obviously, not. You, you're a great Westminster insider. I mean, did Sunak just look like he'd given up today? Because it's not often I agree with a word that Slippery Starmer says because he's usually just reading off his script. But actually, he seemed to pick up on something related to Sunak's 
body language, it feels like he's just lost the ability to fight. Yeah, and I think that's right, and that, that applies to pretty much every Tory MP you now talk to. Oh. Um, they, they are just saying, look, that, that as far as they're concerned, the election is lost. Um, they're concerned about whether or not they can hold their seats, because it, it looks like, under the polls at the moment, it looks like a complete wipeout. And the problem with the Tory party now is, is just giving up governing. What it should be doing is not asking itself what it's for, which it keeps doing, um, that's a job for opposition. If they want to actually talk about what is conservatism, where are they going, do it in opposition. They don't At the know moment, what they're... they're for, though, that's the problem. Well, they don't know what they're for, so in which case, well, then how can the they govern? Is, but, but you're talking about certain parts of the party, because actually Conservative members, Adam, mm -hmm. know exactly what the mm. Conservative Party is about. You know, I was at the Conservative Democratic yeah. Organisation conference the other week, and I was inspired by the people in that room well, that's to one know of the exactly problems. what yeah. the government should be doing, mm. but they're not doing it. And the problem is, by focusing on the economy, which is, of course, very important, they're giving up on all of these other areas, uh, which include, by the way, the madness going on in our schools, yeah. you know, oh. with this ex gender extremism. Mm. They're giving up on stopping these idiots like Just Stop Oil, who we're going to be speaking about mm. soon. There's so much more they could fight. Do, do you know, uh, figure, the same with Rishi Sunak. They have no idea what the small businessman... Well, they're both like, Yeah, mm. the, the, a small businessman like me has to deal with mm. every day, or the hard-working people of this country have to deal with every yeah. day. So there's such a detachment now from someone like myself yeah. and maybe my staff yeah. well, of to, course. to those And two. also, <laughs> it's a bit too late for fiscal prudence when they just spent the past four years or three years locking down the country and signing black cheques. But, but it's because the Tory membership and the Tory supporters know what they want. That's why they were sidelined and Rishi was just yeah. slid in under Exactly. The, under Which the, is unforgivable. The it's their own fault, Dan. Which is completely They're now reaping the whirlwind. They hit the self-destruct button. Adam Brooks, Christine Hamilton, Nigel Nelson, my superstar panel with me all night, but also on the way. As England wicketkeeper Johnny Bairstow showed police how to handle Just Stop Oil's eco terrorists by carrying one of the green goons off the field at Lords, is it time cops followed Bouncer Bairstow's lead and just finally got tough on these idiots? Nana, a queer, reacts to those extraordinary scenes during the ashes shortly. But up next in The Clash, as lawyers for the Mirror Group claim the Duke of Sussex is only suing tabloid newspapers as a moral crusade, not because he has evidence. Is Harry actually doing more harm than good by focusing on the past? Royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams, historian Dr Tessa Dunlop and social commentator Bushra Sheikh duke it out on that controversial question in The Clash next. But what do you think, Dan, at GBNews.com? Vote in our poll. It's at GB News on Twitter and we're back to Clash straight after this. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the program sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, three till six. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. Three till six p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. 
GB News has its own late night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11 p.m. and repeated every morning at 5 a.m. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11 a.m. on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6 is Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's News Channel. Hi, I'm Dan Wooten. You can watch me live on GB News Monday to Thursday from 9pm. And did you know that you can also watch and listen live on our website, gbnews.com. You'll always be up to date on the latest breaking news, as well as enjoying the best stories, opinions and shows. You can even join the debate under our live player as you're watching. So head straight to gbnews.com on TV, radio and online. GB News, Britain's news channel. Nana Aquir, Jim Davidson and Paul Burrell all on the way. But first, The Clash. And the closing arguments of Prince Harry's high court battle against Mirror Group newspapers were lodged yesterday with MGN's barrister Andrew Green KC dropping a courtroom bombshell. With the Duke suing the company over unlawful information gathering, Green argues that Prince Harry has brought legal action as a moral crusade, not because he has evidence, writing, the true purpose of this litigation appears not to be to achieve compensation for unlawful activity by MGN, but instead it forms part of the Duke's campaign to reform the British press. He added that it had failed to withstand scrutiny or identify any evidence. And those claims seem to be backed up by Harry himself in his High Court appearance just three weeks ago. Here's our actor. you think your phone was consistently hacked throughout the 15-year period between 1996 and 2011, the time period that makes up your claim against MGN? It could have been happening on a daily basis. I simply don't know. Are you aware of any evidence to show this? No, that's part of the reason I'm here, my lord. So what do you reckon, as lawyers for the Mirror Group say the Duke of Sussex is suing the press as a moral crusade, is Harry doing more harm than good by focusing on the past? Dan at GBNews.com. Vote in our poll. You can head to at GBNews on Twitter to do so. Those results shortly. But to help you make up your mind, I'm joined by the royal commentator, Richard Fitzwilliams, the social commentator, Bushra Sheikh, and the royal author... Dr. Tessa Dunlop. So, Bushra, this is a fascinating closing argument uh, from the Mirror Group who say, look, Harry has no evidence. This is a campaign. He's using the judicial system to try and shut down freedom of the press in the UK. That's not OK, is it, Bushra? Certainly, Dan, it's definitely not OK. There's, there's a couple of elements here. One is it's valuable court time that Harry is wasting by doing this. And I'm sure there are thousands and hundreds of other claims that the judges and the courts could do with seeing to instead of this. And the other side of it is this reform that Harry talks about, or the crusade and the moral crusade. I can't help but really wonder, is he trying to do something in regards to his late mother, Princess Diana, perhaps trying to have justice for her when things were slightly different with the paparazzi in the press in those times? Things have moved on, and I just feel like this is uncalled for. Also, to add to the fact that the allegations that he's claiming are incredibly unsub un un you know, unsubstantiated, so he is wasting time. Richard Fitzwilliams, it's a fair point, isn't he? There wasn't any evidence in court, whereas Harry has spoken consistently and constantly about what I would describe as a vendetta 
he almost wants to shut down the British tabloid press. Well, I think the point is, of course, what the judge decides. Because if Harry wins, and I mean, he's called it his life's work to, as he sees it, reform the tabloid press. We know that the two, the Sussexes and the tabloids, uh, cannot stand each other. There's no question about that. But so far as this is concerned, if he wins, it's worth remembering hacking is the great evil that brought up Leveson. So the Mirror Group newspaper already paid £100 million, pounds, as reported, uh, because of uh, illicit hacking. And there's a positive cue. There's some hundred people, it's reported. So this is going to be absolutely huge. And it's worth remembering he's got an associated press claim in court. And then there's the NGN uh, against the Sun and the former News of the World. Yeah, he's going Very for everyone. He's going for everyone. And by the way, this is not excusing any illegal activity at newspapers. But Tess Dunlop, the issue is Harry has no evidence. So he is using a judicial process for a campaign. And that's not how you are meant to run campaigns. I always worry about you, Dan. You get so you? upset and anxious about Harry's court case. Yeah, I mean, it is his private money that he's using to shine a light for the moral good. Some so you don't believe in freedom of the press? I do fully believe in freedom of the press. We had a huge inquiry in 2012, uh, unfinished because of pressure from the press. So we never worked out what damages should have been accorded to the victims in the wake of the Levinson inquiry. And actually, I can't see why this does so much harm. I mean, tomorrow there's news coming out about the sovereign grant and how much our state institution, the monarchy, costs us. I would argue you'd be better off uh, expending your ire on that as opposed to a court case that's funded or is going to be funded by Harry if he loses it. And if he doesn't lose it, and please bear in mind when you say, oh, there's no proof, there's no proof, he has to prove this on the balance of probabilities. Now, I don't want to patronise you or talk to you like you're a schoolboy, but it is a little bit complicated. It's a civil case. And that means that the judge in this case only has to be satisfied on the idea that the occurrence of the event was more likely than not to have occurred. Oh, yes. And I'm used actually, to be patronised sure by you happened. by now, Tessa, and I'm well aware. And do you know what, Tessa? Here's my concern. Actually, I'll put this to you, Bushra. Here's my concern, Bushra. I believe, and I hope I'm proven wrong, but I believe the judge won't want to embarrass a member of the royal family. Because remember, a member of the royal family has never lost in court. So he probably will find. He probably will find. Oh, maybe one of these 33 stories came from hacking. And then he will give Harry this very small amount of damages. And I argue, Bushra, that this is actually doing great damage to the British press. And Harry doesn't believe in the British press. You know, he's actually said he doesn't even believe in freedom of the press in the US. He's against the First Amendment. Yes, I mean, when it comes to Harry, we know that there's a lot there is so much stuff happening with him. The fact that he's even gone to America and he's pursuing this stuff in Great Britain just seems so oddly bizarre to me. And um, firstly, we know that he hasn't got enough evidence. And even if the judge doesn't want to embarrass him, if this campaign exists, which he's clearly said that it has, this is not the way to do it, not to use a justice system in this country. Go and campaign for the reform of the press like other campaigns do, which is externally, yeah. and really get... Set up his own really newspaper. Richard's, Richard, why are you shaking your head at that? I mean... He can go and set up his own newspaper. He can talk about the media as much as he wants. But Danny has a perfect right to do it. And as I Without say, evidence. it is an absolutely vital issue. The phone hacking, the one reason it may be thrown out, of course, is because it was a long time ago. But the facts are that he has undoubtedly taken up some form of crusade, but he's entitled to do it. Okay. And if he wins, it's going to be an absolutely huge event. And also, you mentioned he was the first royal of 1891. Well, I mean, it takes a good deal of courage to do it. Oh, may or may courage. Courage. Because the royals never complain. They never explain. Okay, let Why? Tessa come in. Let Tessa come in. I give him the courage. Just keep on going back to this idea that there's no evidence. Actually, I love the fact you chose to focus on NGMN's conclusion, concluding arguments, and you didn't look at Harry's uh, KC Sherborne, who pointed out that actually, and this is really suspicious, on the head of the Sunday Mirror's telephone was the Duke of Sussex 
private mobile phone number. Also, why won't key it's witnesses from that time, the high hegens, the executives and the legal board of MGN, called to give evidence. There was huge holes in their case. The problem with this, Dan, and I include you, I'm afraid, here, my dear oh, friend, okay. as part of the problem. You are judging this case through a media prism when the whole point is Harry is challenging that media prism. And this is the Rubbish. one time when I'm sad we haven't got televised courtrooms because the only people reporting back to us about what was said in the case is that self same media that oh, actually Tessa. he's trying to interrogate Tessa, you're and he's not alone. Complete rubbish. There are three or four Tessa, other claimants. You're, you're, speaking, you're speaking complete rubbish on that because actually the Guardian newspaper, the British bashing corporation who were all in the court and providing live updates are desperate to see the tabloid media in Britain shut down. The Guardian was responsible for the revelations about phone hacking in the first place. So I wasn't looking at this evidence through any form of prism. I was looking at all of the court reporting. We actually recreated key moments from the trial. I played one to you there. Harry himself, Tessa, admitted that he had no evidence. That was his own words. I'm going to go back Dan, to the point Dan, of this civil case, it's balance of well, probabilities. No, no. And to what we, I just know, said. we know, because the Mirror Group admitted it in 2015, phone hacking and blagging and illegal interception was rife. They yes. have set aside £28 but million pounds to pay out. Okay, we Bush know that, that they are culpable in many other cases, so why not, Harry? It's <laughs> the burden is on men them to say, why not, Harry, if they were doing it to every other Coronation Street actor, okay, Tessa. and goodness knows who, Final then why you, not Bush Chris Harry? Yeah, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just going to enter by saying that, you know what, the British public are just fed up, fed up of Harry, fed up of Meghan. And right now, the only kind of feeling that we've got is Harry is grifting and he's using this press, using this system to just get more eyes on him. It's unnecessary. You need to okay. stop doing it. Spirit of debate, Richard Fitzwilliams, Bush, Rashraik, Tessa Dunlop. Thank you to all three of, with, three of you. Uh, who do you agree with, though? Is Harry doing more harm than good by focusing on the past in court? Diane writes, yes. He needs to leave the past behind. It's over. Time to focus on his future and what he's going to do for the rest of his life. Hal writes, Harry is slowly learning that reflecting on the past will only get him so far. Now he is going to have to start relying on something like, I don't know, evidence? <laughs> Not much of that. And from Randy, uh, they use the past as a tactic to draw sympathy. Just look at all the endless Diana comparisons in the Netflix show, but it's a tactic that's wearing very thin now. And 91% of you agree that Harry is doing more harm than good by focusing on the past with these legal court cases. Just 9% of you backing him here. Coming up, as reports gather steam that Meghan's rumoured memoir will unleash hell on the royal family, including possibly outing the alleged royal racist, will the Sussexes' reported peace with the firm be short-lived? Harry's biographer Angela Levin gives her unmissable analysis very soon. But next, as the eco-zealots from Just Stop Oil stop play at Lords today, is it time for the police to clamp down hard on the climate loons? Nana Aquare reacts to England wicketkeeper Johnny Bairstow's handling of the green goons. It's a sight to behold. I'll show it to you straight after this. Like all families, we have arguments every now and then, but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is, and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often, they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast. Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 
Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <gasps> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Nightmare commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's at drive time, 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB Plus on the Smart Speaker app and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, all you have to say is Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's on GB News and GB News Radio. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate, both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you know Kate Moss? Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no. no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Angela Levin and Jim Davidson both coming up. But now it's usually all they eat for breakfast, lunch and dinner. But today, those Just Stop Oil loons took their passion for cricket to a whole new level. Bringing misery to the lives of normal Brits once again, they stormed onto the field of play at Lords during the second Ashes Test between England and Australia. But wicketkeeper Johnny Bairstow showed the police how it's done by physically carrying one of the eco-terrorists off the pitch. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Watch this. <laughs> Nana Aquaire, that's a moment we've been waiting for, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm very, I was so pleased to see that. But what I was concerned about, I thought, oh, goodness. You remember how the last time the police jumped in that time oh, yeah. when Just Talk World were protesting on that road and then somebody came out of their van to move them away. And as soon as that person did that, the police were on the guy who was moving the protesters out of the way. I was thinking to myself, it's very brave of Johnny because knowing our police, somebody will come and probably complain about him doing that, which I thought, thank God he did it and well done to him. Yeah, indeed. Good luck if they tried to arrest Bearstow, though. I, I don't think that would go down well, Nana. It's interesting, though, isn't it? Because today, uh, Rishi Sunak's spokesperson saying, oh, this is why we've got these really tough rules in place. But it's like the rules are not tough enough because they're not working. These guys keep disrupting uh, the roads. They're now disrupting events. I think the police have to get tougher, Nana. They need to follow Bearstow's well, lead. I think what they do is they seem to not acknowledge passive aggression, which is equally as bad as aggression. And, and what Just Stop Oil are, are a passive aggression, aggressive group. And then if somebody comes and uses aggression against them, the police only seem to acknowledge the aggression against them, whereas mm. being passive aggressive is equally as aggressive. And I think these kind of groups behaving in this kind of way, it really needs to be punished. And the police need to get quick and act quickly on it instead of allowing us to do it and then putting and then getting us in trouble.
Very good point. Now, yesterday, Nana, we were both there sitting next to each other, actually. You were very good company. Thank you. But we sent a hammer blow here at GB News through the broadcasting establishment, picking up two gongs at the Trick Awards, which were actually voted for by the public. That's what we love about this. And why Nigel Farage had to put up with boos and jeers when he collected his award for best presenter, you'd think by today the woke MSM would be ready to move on. But no, Nana. No, 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 no. Susanna Reid, after losing out to Nigel, continued the deranged attacks on woke Good Morning Britain. Watch. Well, that was the end of a, of a speech which was actually the longest acceptance speech. I'd say it was about five or six minutes long, or maybe it felt like that in the room. Nigel beat you. He did, right. indeed. The only woman on the shortlist. Right. Uh, well, on, actually, a very long shortlist. Yeah. Uh, but congratulations mm. to uh, to Nigel. But a lot of booze, Kevin. I mean, but he will revel in that. Yeah, but... Yes, and he did. Yeah. And to be fair, I think he kind of whipped them up. Bit of sour grapes, Nana, because, of course, Good Morning Britain uh, won nothing from the viewers, right? Mm. Mm. They won nothing, but at the end they were given some sort of consolation prize, sort of like an achievement prize that is not voted for by the public, of course. But I don't know who votes for it, but it certainly weren't, wasn't, isn't the people, which is which are the people who voted for GB News. And it's interesting that she brought out the fact that she's a woman and she was the only woman on the shortlist, as if that may have been one of the reasons why she didn't get the prize. The reason she didn't get the prize is because Nigel is better and Nigel responds and Nigel is reactive to what the people actually want. Whereas, if I'm honest, as much as I used to watch Good Morning Britain many years ago, it's very, well, passe, it's just in the background. It's not... It doesn't connect with people as well as GB News. It doesn't really speak to the audience. And they've got complacent. Yeah. They've got so used to being, getting the viewers, getting the sponsorship, getting the, the advertising, that they've had to make very little effort with the programming and with the people. In fact, they've taken their viewers for granted. Yeah, and it's become a total woke fest too. Uh, now, look, Nana, I, I had to ask you about this. That odd little mouthpiece for the Sussexes, you know the man I mean, Omid Scobie, very, very odd bloke, very odd bloke. Uh, he's announced he's got a new book on the way. It's called Endgame, and Scobie claims it will be a, quote, penetrating investigation into the future of the royal family. Uh, now, I don't think I can decide which will be filled with more lies, this toilet paper from Scobie or Prince Harry's spare. Well, when it was called Endgame, I thought perhaps he was referring to Harry and Meghan. But no, <laughs> it wasn't. The Endgame was theirs. But no, Scooby-Doo was actually referring to the royal family and the monarchy. But what does he know about it? I mean, all everything he will be saying will be coming from so-called sources that he seems to have. And how long did Meghan really spend in the royal family? It was like, what, 14 months where she lived with them? So how he can... He, he is just trying to capitalise. Yeah. On the fact this is, that the what this family. book's going to be, Nana, what this book is going to be is loads of bitter bile fed mm. to Scobie uh, by Harry and Meghan's PR team and their friends. And I think how sad that you're using this odd little guy to try and slag off uh, the life's work of your grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II. You, you know, what you think was... That, I mean... Surely, surely Harry and Meghan now need to be focusing on moving forward. Surely we've mm. had enough of this. It feels like they're through somebody else now. They're carrying on with the same thing, but it's just not coming from them. And obviously it'll, there'll be some level of sanctioning through them for him to write this anyway. I just find that I just think, wish they'd just get on with focusing on their own lives and start and moving forward in their own way instead of using the royal family and people like Obed Scobie, Scooby-Doo is what I call it, because if it hadn't been for the pesky kids, he wouldn't have anything to write. <laughs> Nana Aquia, uh, great to chat. And, of course, Nana back 3 o'clock Saturday and Sunday here on GB News. Thank you, Nana. But coming up, as crimes by illegal immigrants increase by the day, do Court of Appeal judges need to allow the Rwanda scheme to go ahead tomorrow morning to protect our borders and keep Britain safe? My superstar panel debate that shortly. We'll also have the first of tomorrow's newspapers for you hot off the press. But next, with reports that Meghan's rumoured memoir will unleash hell on the royal family, including possibly outing the alleged royal racist. Other Sussexes about to go nuclear 
as their influence and popularity plummet. Royal biographer Angela Levin delivers her bombshell analysis in mere moments. Stay tuned. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it. Like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you know Kate Moss? Moss? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Weeknights on GB News from 6 p.m. You'll always get drama. Please stop, Michelle. I'm going, okay. Please stop. Should I just shut up? Romance. You like me, I like you. There you oh, go. There you are. Well, don't tell anybody. Don't. Adventure. Da 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 dum, etc. Yeah, that's the whole point. But, 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 um, yeah. And action. Sergeant shut up. Read my superstar panel. They're already at it. They're fighting. It's going to be quite a show. Only on GB News. Britain's watching. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel... Paul Burrell and Jim Davidson on the way, but it's time now for leading royal biographer Angela Levin. And Prince Harry has deviously claimed before that there was enough material for him to write a second spiteful book. And according to a royal source, this veiled threat has not been forgotten by the firm. Now, they told GB News presenter Camilla Tomine in the Daily Telegraph, there's not a lot of trust left to allow the family to maintain a good and open relationship. How do you speak openly without it ending up in volume two. But should they actually be faring a memoir from Meghan Markle? Indeed, Camilla writes that if this were to happen and the Duchess is minded to finally name the royal racist, then all hell will likely break loose again. So, Angela, they've just lost this $20 million Spotify deal. I'm told that Netflix want to pull the plug on their $100 million TV deal as quickly as they can. So there's a real risk now for the royal family, isn't there, that the poisoned pen is going to be pulled out for Meghan's memoir. I think they're going to outsmart the memoir because, actually, the way she's been attacked by so many of American people who are involved in, you know... Um, uh, uh, the sort of all sorts of people who help her get success, um, then, um, you know, she's lost all her credibility. And I think that they will, one, not 
listen to it. People won't believe it because she's got a reputation for telling mm -hmm. untruths or exaggerating hugely so it doesn't make any sense. And I think that would just make it as bad as it is. I don't think it will move it backwards in any way because they're used to it now. They see that the public, not just here but in America and around other countries, are, are saying that she's not talented, she's no good, you know, she has told lies. She's even, you know, a lot among black people they say mm. that she's using them for her own aid. Well, I heard she's Trevor not... Phillips yes. say that this week, which was an extraordinary intervention from the former Equalities Commission. Yes, aide. she said she has to. She had to learn how to be black, you know, because she wasn't until she got married, until she met the royal family. Um, and he was very much against her and how she's behaved. And I think, you know, it'll there'll be a, a lot of sales because people will want to know what she said. But I think it will you be You think disaster. her days of causing damage to the royal family are yes. over? How many times can you hit them? You see, you could see at the coronation that they um, ignored Harry. He wasn't popular. They just got on with it. But people are laughing. There's crowds coming when Charles or Catherine or William go anywhere, they don't need them and that must be very, very painful. So they want to up the action, but it's too late. Now look, after Guardian reports that Netflix would follow Spotify in cutting these ties with Harry and Meghan, a spokesperson to the streaming platform said, our exciting journey with them isn't ending anytime soon. That's what I call a bit of a fudge, a bit of a fudge because clearly they're under pressure to try and back Harry and Meghan publicly. They haven't announced the couple's plans, though. However, in the works is apparently a feminist retelling of Miss Havisham, the iconic character from Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. And speaking to the Daily Mail, an English professor and Dickens expert warned the Duke and Duchess against going woke with the famous tale as it will end up, quote, uh, being a voyeuristic misery. But Angela, that's exactly what they're planning to do. This is a woke version of Great Expectations. Yes. That's exactly what She's it's going, going to be. She's going to turn Miss Havisham into a feminist and the difficulty she has living in a man, you know, man's are more important than women. I mean, it's got no chance. The original um, film of that in 1946 has outshone everything. And there's been two or three other ones and they've all been absolutely hit at by the critics. And this is an absurd um, way of doing something because it's been shown before recently in the B on the BBC and you can't keep on doing this. I mean, she's doing the thing that And that, that was a woke before, version and everyone and hated it. Hated it. But you can't change Dickens like that. You can't sort of put this woman... I don't think either of them have got the ability to do that. They're not knowledgeable enough. They're not literary people that take a Miss Havisham who sat looking at her wedding cake for decades um, back to when she was a young woman and how she was fighting against the men. This is what Meghan likes, you know, she likes saying that everybody against women, when in fact, I mean, she's done phenomenally well because nobody's been against her, i.e. her husband let her run wild. Um, and it's, it's, again, a nonsense. They pick up things that um, Netflix have cancelled, and I think this is another one. They haven't agreed to it yet. No. But it's going to be... Well, they haven't agreed to any of them. They ideas. haven't, but it's going to be rubbish, isn't it? You can tell that. Well, if it even You've happens. got to be... I don't think it's even going to happen, Angela, because no. Netflix is so wary now of this whole go-woke, go-broke phenomenon. Yeah. And I think it sounds utterly awful, and they won't want to waste tens of millions of dollars no. on, a, on an awful project. But the other thing is that if she's going to be... A, um, behind the camera, which has said mm. they're going to do that now, no one be slightly interested because, you know, the directors and producers aren't the ones who get people, you know, standing in the street and shouting and cheering them. You know, it, it's she's got no experience mm. to do that, no delicacy, no insight. Mm. Um, it's just not there. So it's a waste of time and, and money. And what's been fascinating this week is you've actually seen Prince William doing all of the social justice and the public service, which is, of course, what Harry and Meghan promised that they would be able to do when they cut free of the royal family. We've seen none of it from them. Virtually no public service, virtually no social justice. 
What do you make of Prince William's project to end homelessness within five years? Because lots of folk, Angela, are saying, look, this is bold, it's daring, it's audacious. Some concerns, though, that maybe it does wade a little bit into the area of politics? Yes, yeah, so I think those are anti-monarchy people who say that. I mean, this is something that he really wants to do. This is He says it's his life work. Um, Catherine has her life work about dealing with young mm. families and young children. Early childhood, yeah. And both of them actually have homelessness in it, in the things that they want to cover. So they can work very well together but not tread on each other's feet. And he's really wanted to do this. I mean, I remember when I was talking to Prince Harry when I was writing his biography, and he said to me, no one in our family wants to be king, but somebody's got to. But William's always telling me he feels he needs to make a difference. He doesn't want to cut ribbons. He doesn't want to come and go in five minutes. He really wants to make a difference. Well, here is a difference. He can really do something, not because he's got three huge places to live in and he's got umpteen hundred million thousand pounds of t to live on, but because he really cares about people and he can understand it. And also, he can bring people together. So he can bring all sorts of people together to discuss it and to help. He's not going to try and, you know, take over no. politics in any way. No, indeed. But what's so ironic, Angela, is it's exactly Exactly the sort of project that Prince Harry could have been doing, but instead he's been wasting his time not doing anything for Netflix. Angela Levin, uh, Royal Biographer, thank you so much. Okay. But coming up, Paul Burrell joins me live to give his unique insight on Tom Bauer's bombshell that Harry thinks Meghan is in touch with Princess Diana from beyond the grave, as well as an exclusive update on his brewing and potentially explosive legal action against Prince Harry. You're not going to want to miss that. But next, we're 12 hours away from a monumental uh, Court of Appeals decision on the Rwanda plan. So do the judges need to get these migrant flights off the ground if we're ever going to take back control of Britain's borders? My superstar panel debate that very important breaking story next. Plus, I'll bring you a first look at tomorrow's newspaper front pages hot off the press. Don't go anywhere. We're back in just two minutes time. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's already in waiting, they're itching to go, and it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Nightmare commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's, at drive time, 3 till 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB+, Plus on the Smart Speaker app, and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, all you have to say is, Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's. On GB News and GB News Radio. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. It's 10 p.m. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, on the eve of the Court of Appeal judgment on the Rwanda asylum plan, is it imperative for those migrant flights to take off, both as a matter of sovereignty 
and national security? That's the big debate with my superstar panel next. And tonight, I'm joined by Christine Hamilton, Adam Brooks and Nigel Nelson. Plus, lawyers for the Mirror Group newspapers say Prince Harry is suing the press as a moral crusade, not because he has any actual evidence. And the late Princess Diana's former butler, Paul Burrell, who was attacked by the Duke of Sussex in the High Court, is saying get your facts straight or face legal action. Paul speaks out live about the extraordinary debate with Prince Harry very shortly. Also coming up, it's the 75th anniversary of our broken National Health Service, which was reported in a totally normal way by the lefties at BBC Newsnight. ask if the cult-like nature of the NHS is holding Britain back in the media buzz. And GB News toppled the broadcasting establishment at the Trick Awards, but the bitter protests continue to reverberate around the woke MSM today, including from sore loser, Susanna. A, a lot of booze, Kevin. I mean, but he will revel in that. Yes, Every... and he did. Yeah. And to be fair, I think he kind of whipped them up. And an uncancelled legendary comic Jim Davidson gives his irrepressible take on the GB News row. The latest crisis at ITV's this morning, Elton John at Glastonbury and schoolboys wearing skirts. Don't miss the great man later this hour. New Greatest Britain Union Jackass 2 and the first front pages. First though, Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you, and good evening to you. Well, wreckage from the ill-fated Titan submersible has been recovered from the sea floor of the North Atlantic and brought ashore today for the first time. New pictures show metal debris being unloaded from the Horizon Arctic ship in St John's. That's in Newfoundland by the Canadian Coast Guard. The pictures show wiring coming from the tail cone, the titanium end caps of the sub, the landing frame and even the porthole. The sub imploded an hour and 45 minutes into its descent uh, to view the wreckage of the Titanic on the floor of the sea on the 18th of June. All five souls on board perished after the sub suffered a catastrophic implosion underwater. Well, in news here at home, Thames Water says it's working constructively with its shareholders to secure funding amid mounting concern over its financial stability. Contingency plans are reportedly being drawn up by the government, including a possible emergency nationalisation of the company. It's feared Thames Water, Britain's biggest water supplier, is £14 billion in debt. The Environment Minister, Rebecca Powell, says... 15 million customers with Thames Water should rest assured their water supplies will be protected. Ofcom launched an investigation into BT today after a disruption to the 999 emergency call service at the weekend. The communications watchdog says it's going to look into the incident to find out whether or not the telecoms giant failed to comply with its regulatory duties. Emergency calls in some areas were unable to connect to an operator for a few hours. BT manages the 999 phone system and has apologised sincerely for the UK-wide disruption. The company took nearly three hours to alert the government there was a problem. Let's bring you up to date with events in Paris, where rioting has entered a second day now after a 17-year-old delivery boy was shot dead by police in a traffic stop. 31 people have been arrested in clashes which have followed. 2,000 police officers have been brought in to the Nanterre region to calm the situation down. Protesters have burnt out cars and buildings. And footage on social media shows two officers beside a car with one shooting at the driver. As the car drives away, a police officer is being investigated. Yesterday, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, labelled the shooting unexplainable and inexcusable. And entertainment news, the singer-songwriter Madonna has postponed her world tour after falling ill and being admitted into intensive care for several days. And a warning, some flashing images coming up. Her talent manager said Madonna developed a serious bacterial infection 
which led to pausing all her show commitments. But he says her health is now on the up and they're expecting a full recovery. The 64-year-old was to start her celebration tour next month. You're up to date on TV, online, DAB Plus Radio and the TuneIn app. This is GB News, the People's Channel. Tomorrow's news tonight now in our Media Buzz first front pages are in. Straight to them. Don't you dare block boats bill is the headline in the Daily Express as the government warns unelected peers they face a summer showdown if they try to prevent new laws to stop the boats. And after his run-in with fountain pens, the Daily Star leads on King Charles's latest target, slugs. According to longtime friend of the King, Alan Titchmarsh, His Majesty is reportedly not amused that his beloved plants are being feasted on by the slimy creatures with the King objecting to the Royal Horticultural Society's decision to remove slugs from its list of pests. My superstar panel, back with me now. No pests in sight, but we do have the broadcaster and author Christine Hamilton, the businessman and activist Adam Brooks and GB News senior political commentator Nigel Nelson. <coughs> now, an asylum seeker has been charged with allegedly raping a woman in a Lincolnshire park just 40 days after arriving in the country by a small boat. The 33-year-old suspect is accused of dragging the alleged victim into some bushes before attacking her in Skegness. He's been refused bail and will be held in custody, while the government and prosecutors are only now scrambling to establish his criminal history from before he entered the UK. Local MP Matt Warman described the allegations as hugely shocking. And while we can't discuss the specifics of this active legal case, these latest reports have sparked fresh debate about the safety of Britain's borders, especially as tomorrow morning the Court of Appeal will announce its ruling on whether the government's gang-busting Rwanda plan can go ahead, leaving just 12 hours until a decision that could decide the fate of Rishi Sunak's premiership. If judges come down in favour of the government, migrant flights to Kingali could start as early as September, marking a long-awaited and desperately needed victory in the battle for Britain's borders. So, Christine, on the eve of what is going to be a landmark ruling, do these Court of Appeal judges hold the safety of our country in their hands? Well, possibly they do. I mean, what we need to do is get out of the ECHR mm -hmm. um, because this is what happened last yeah. time. All our courts... But Sunak have... said that's not even on the table. Well, all our courts, our own courts at every level ruled that Rwanda was legal and then suddenly an anonymous judge, we have no idea who he was, suddenly says, oh, no, they're, they're, they're illegal and so we stopped the whole thing, which is a complete nonsense. We left... We voted Brexit so we get away from all that sort of thing. What worries me about this is that... Yes, I do hope it's a deterrent, but I fear that it's a bit of a sledgehammer to miss a nut. What we need to do is stop the boats. And it is, to me, utterly ludicrous that we cannot work out a system whereby France takes responsibility. These migrants, they're coming from France. Why don't we they welcome them onto the beaches, put them aboard a big, fast, high-speed craft and whiz them straight back to France mm -hmm. and deposit them on the Yeah, French I mean, Adam Brooks, look, you know, there are so many door. things when that I think built. we should have done. So many things we should have done. You know, I believe in turn-back policies. Mm. I believe in offshore processing. Look, the government hasn't done any of that. Mm. They've put all of the eggs in the Rwanda mm. scheme basket. Now, I think the Rwanda scheme is good and I think it could work. The problem is everyone's writing it off before it's been given an opportunity to work. The whole yeah. point is it's not about the cost of the individual migrants because it's going to provide some degree of deterrent because if you are in a first-world country, France, mm. and you are an economic migrant, you're not going to risk coming across on one of those small boats, 
if there is a possibility yeah. that you could end up spending your life in Rwanda. And that's where people miss the point. Exactly. We need deterrence. And, and that needs to be spelled out to people because Australia, suddenly, yeah. w w when they were turning the boats back or, or they basically mandated uh, detention for yeah. anyone illegally or unlawfully yeah. entering And little country. islands, and right. you were never, ever going to be on the Australian... And, and, and the, the numbers drastically reduced. Yeah. Now... I, yeah, they, been, they did stop. Yeah, they did, yeah. I mean, I've been very vocal on here and on Twitter about the dangers of dumping tens of thousands of undocumented, unknown men, and they are 98% men, into communities. Worried parents, I speak to worried parents, you know, I get messages on Twitter as well. We do not know their background. We've had rapists, we've had terrorists, we've had murderers, yes. we've had mm. gangsters. Mm. Yes. We do not know their past, yes. and we can't talk about this case, but they do not know the past of this man. So we have to, you know, we have to look at reality mm. now and for the futures of our children and think, mm. how do we stop this? We have to be as harsh well, look, as look, we can. Look, look at young Tommy Roberts, the 21-year-old uh, aspiring Royal Marine, stabbed killed mm. on a night out in Bournemouth. But at the moment, we've got the thing Finally. the wrong way round. We give everybody the benefit of the doubt unless it's proved otherwise. Why don't we say, you come onto these shores, you prove before we let you loose into the community, and that's what's Well, that's what happens. That's the asylum system. That's exactly but what happens. But, it, but they're, but dumping, it's they're dumping their ideas. They're dumping their ideas. They all come in and they without come ideas. Come without ideas. Sorry, so, uh, everyone was talking Sorry, everyone. the same well, time. We're, we're <laughs> so angry with you. Look, you hate this Rwanda scheme, don't you? Know? I do, yeah. Um, why? Um, what, what, I don't why? I, I don't think it's going to work, and I appreciate that we haven't got any evidence either way whether it might work. Um, I think why don't it's... you give it a go? Well, I think it's a gimmick. Um, it is incredibly expensive. Even on the government's own figures, you could put an asylum seeker in a, a hotel for three and a half years for the time it for the the money we're going to spend on sending them but to Rwanda. But it's about stopping them with a deterrent. Yeah, but that's it, what but the this question is. About. Is it a deterrent? Uh, Suella Braverman says, "Oh, look, this, this Rwanda's wonderful. That the yeah. she'd like the decor in her own in her own home." Well, Chris, that, 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 like yeah. that is one of the arguments. That is one of the arguments. The thing with the Australian policy, right? Mm. And this is where the human rights Right, rights activists got very angry. But, you know, life on those small islands in the detention centres in Nauru, for example, was not particularly no. pleasant, mm. so it really did provide a deterrent. Mm. But then the reality is, is what it does is it smashed the people smuggling mm. gangs mm. and it stopped people dying in the middle of an ocean. Well, we've got a much cheaper alternative to Rwanda. We've got plenty of uninhabited Scottish islands. Yeah. Why don't we put I them know, there? But, but the problem is, there are. I'm just going to repeat, there are lots of things the government could have done, mm. right? There and are loads haven't. of things they could mm. have done. Turn back policy. Mm. They haven't done any yeah. of that. They've backed Rwanda, so we have to but, but make this turn back I, policy. I, I, how, how, do you, how do you do that? That we that one of the things that we lost through Brexit was the returns agreement we had with European countries. Oh, it's all down Inclu to Brexit, isn't no, it? No, it's you not just, down to Brexit, but, but it is down, it is down to the fact we haven't got a returns agreement with France. No, you, That's why we can't send them back. You don't send them back. You put them on a, a powerful boat, a large mm. number of them on a big powerful boat. I think boat, we should be able to take them back dump to them back to France. Just, it's a turn back policy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a turn back policy. We've had landing craft on the Normandy beaches before. We Yeah, I know, but we're not we're not at war with France. No, but if we that. had a leader with balls, Nigel, they could do yeah. that, and then mm. France would have to come to the table. Whereas actually, exactly. Macron yeah. how, how, how knows would, that we are a soft touch. How would he we is feel if France us like was dumping balls, them on our I'm beaches? I'm sick of it. How would we feel if France came along and dumped, the, and dumped migrants on our beaches? That's what they're doing. You've got to have an agreement. We, we're allies. We have to have an agreement with the country. We're allies until to they send want to people back. France, all the time. France is doing this on purpose. Mm. They want these people to come over here. But look, uh, I want to move on because next Wednesday will mark the 75th birthday of the NHS. And in a surprise to nobody, the supposedly impartial BBC has marked the occasion in a typically partial fashion. In a Newsnight NHS special fronted by Kirsty Walk, children from the Cambridge Children's Hospital Choir were paraded on our screens last night singing happy birthday to a healthcare system facing record waiting times and out of control bureaucracy watch. The author and social commentator Dr. Rakib Hassan has since hit out blasting the sanctification of the NHS as truly cult-like behaviour. And I have to be honest, 
it would be far more helpful for the Beeb to have a real debate about how the NHS must be overhauled rather than throw a little birthday party using these innocent kids. Chris. I've just spent 48 hours mm. in a big NHS hospital when I had problems with my knee as an emergency. And I saw at first hand, first of all, the dedication mm. of the, you know, face-to-face -face people, 99% mm. of yeah. whom were brilliant, one or two... Which of, we know. Which we know have gone into the wrong profession. But the bureaucracy, I was absolutely astonished. I was released by the consultant at half past nine in the morning. I had to have a quick mm. X-ray and a bit of physio. I f and take some pills. By the time I got out, it was half yeah, past indeed. six in the evening because the and I was occupying a bed all this time yeah. because of inefficient well, bureaucracy. The thing is, if, if the BBC and the likes of the BBC continue to treat the NHS like a cult, the NHS it's is never religion. going to improve. Christine Hamilton, Adam Brooks, Nigel Nelson, do stand by because coming up in the media buzz, as the MSM struggles to accept GB News' success at the Trick Awards in England cricketer Johnny Bairstow loses his patience with Just Stop Oil Eco Zealots. My Superstar panel have plenty more to get stuck into tonight. But next, as Tom Bauer drops his latest bombshell on this show, that Prince Harry believes Meghan, and I promise you this is true, is communicating with Princess Diana from beyond the grave. What would Di actually be saying if she were here today? Her former butler and close personal friend Paul Burrell offers his insight on that and gives us a bombshell update on his own potential legal action against Harry. Paul Burrell live next. Don't go anywhere. Like all families, we have arguments every now and then, but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is, and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often, they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast, Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Nightmare Commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's at drive time, 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB Plus on the Smart Speaker app and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, all you have to say is Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's on GB News and GB News Radio. At so Jubes & Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate. Both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until 7 o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of 
light, not just heat. Did you know Kate Moss? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. To GB... Legendary comic Jim Davidson on the way with his unique take on the week's big stories. But first, on the show last night, our esteemed royal biographer Tom Bauer dropped this bombshell about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Watch. He's in touch with Diana. And that Diana... What? That Diana is assuring... Princess me, Diana. Princess Diana, the mother. And that Meghan is assuring Harry that his mother is absolutely sure that what they're doing is right. And she supports them absolutely in everything they're doing. Alrighty then, but let's say that the spirit of the late Princess Diana was in touch with the Sussexes. Would she really be supporting their campaign against the royal family? Well, to respond, I'm delighted to be joined by her former butler, close friend, the royal commentator and insider, Paul Burrell. So, Paul, what did you make of this? Oh, we're just waiting to get Paul's audio. We will. I'm sorry. Get it very... can you hear me? Sorry, Paul. We can hear you now. So, Paul, start yes. again. What did you make okay. of this extraordinary moment, Dan? Dan, have we got to an all-time low? Because I think this couple are dis delusional and have lost the plot. If Meghan is receiving messages from Princess Diana, she must have very bad reception because the princess would never, ever support what. Meghan and Harry are doing in trashing the royal family, especially William. Um, and over the years, I've received many letters, of course, from the princess, in which she is a fervent supporter of the monarchy. And she, she expected her boys to be exactly the same. Um, I think this is a crude attempt to use the good profile of, the, of Princess Diana to support the actions of the Sussexes and indeed to promote their brand which is failing um i think it's a very very low move for them to make to say that the princess is coming from the other side to support them i do not believe that i do not believe it's true mm. and of course this is what tom bauer has been reporting but there were hints at this weren't there paul uh, mm. in Prince Harry's autobiography, Spare, where he spoke mm. about this moment where Meghan felt very connected at Diana's grave. Uh, do you think Meghan is playing on Harry's vulnerabilities emotionally when it comes to his mother? Of course, of course she is, Dan, of course. I've always said that when this 36-year-old mature professional woman who knew exactly what she wanted whispered into Harry's ear, Harry, if we were a couple, we could change the world. Harry did never heard Meghan's voice. He heard Diana's voice. And so really, he's got the mother that he, he lost in Meghan. It's a very complex situation, I know, but you know, she's very clever. I believe she is manipulative. I believe um, she is using this situation to the very best of her abilities. She's a very clever woman. She might be clever, Paul, but she's no Diana, is she? Because Diana not. used her very short time on Earth to make genuine yes. change for the world. And you know Bulimia, what the HIV is, yes. AIDS, landmines, you know, so yes. many huge issues that she put her yes. personal reputation on the line because at the time no one was talking publicly about these issues. Meghan has no. nothing like that to show for her no. time in the royal family. No, she could not step into the shoes of Princess Diana because Diana only gave. What, will you, what, what um, uh, Meghan and Harry have done in America, they've taken. They've, they've done commercial deals for money. When will they get off their backsides and do something for nothing and do something for other people the way Princess Diana did? Why, when will they do a public duty the way William and Catherine are doing their work in this country? I would send them out to Africa. 
I would send Harry to Centre Bealey, his charity. I would send Meghan out there to help young women in Africa. But when will they learn? They can't always take. They have to give. Mm, no, very good point. Now, look, in other news, Paul, significant news, lawyers for Mirror Group newspapers have said Prince Harry is suing the press as a moral crusader, not because he has any actual evidence. However, you potentially, Paul, have your own legal battle brewing with Harry after he attacked mm. you in the High Court with claims you say are untrue. So before we get you to yes. reveal what's going on, this is a reminder of the Duke's comments spoken by an actor. The phrase two-faced shit may have come from a voicemail. That's how I've always seen him. Hindsight is a very different thing. I can't remember whether I wanted a meeting or not. So, Paul, have you been in touch with Prince Harry's legal team since that? I certainly have, Dan, because although Harry has uh, a right to pursue his claim through British courts, along with several other people pursuing claims, um, uh, I, in support of his claim, he had to write a witness statement, and that is, is a legal document under oath um, which supports his case. Um, I just wish that he would get his witness statement correct, with correct um, words and advice in there, because um, personally, um, he said about me that I have sold his mother's possessions, which is completely untrue. So you can't bring um, a witness statement into court, which is untrue. I have written to Clinton's, his solicitors, three times now to ask them um, on what basis does he does he make these claims? Because I would like to know whether or not um, Harry has evidence. I know he doesn't. But why? What gives him the right to make these claims in a court of law about me? That is defamatory and it's untrue. And I'm still waiting for a reply. And given you haven't got that reply, I believe that you are considering taking this to the Law Society? Yes. Well, my husband's a lawyer. So he says to me, well, you know, if we can't get a reply from Clintons, who are representing Harry, we will have to go further up the ladder and, and complain. Because we have a right to complain. I have a right to say this is untrue. And if this is untrue, what other parts of Harry's witness statements are untrue? Well, indeed. Indeed, that is, I think, the critical point in terms of his public reputation. But in terms of your reputation, Paul, mm. if you don't get some sort of retraction from Prince Harry, are you mm. prepared to pursue him legally? I am, I am prepared to pursue this further, yes, because it's my reputation at stake. It's not just Harry. Harry is a very privileged young man, and he's a petulant young man as well. But I have a right to defend myself too. Mm. So you could end up suing Prince Harry for defamation if he refuses to retract the false claim? Yes, it could go that far. Watch this space, Dan. Wow. Ball barrel. Keep us posted. Diana's rock, close personal friend. So great to have you, Paul. Speak soon. Good to see you, Dan. But coming up in Uncancelled, as GB News caused a mainstream media meltdown at the Trick Awards and Elton John's Glastonbury set splits opinion, comedy legend Jim Davidson joins me to give his uniquely irreverent take on the hot stories of the woke week. But next in the media buzz, with that success, bitterly jeered by the MSM, has the broadcasting establishment forgotten who they are meant to serve the British public. My superstar panel will have plenty to say, plus I'm going to show you how sour grape Susanna Reid reacted to being beaten by Nigel Farage. Also, we'll have tomorrow's newspaper front page is hot off the press. Don't go anywhere.
I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it, like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you know Kate okay, Moss? Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Weeknights on GB News from 6 p.m. You'll always get drama. Please stop, Michelle. Oh, I know, yeah. Please <laughs> stop. So I just shut off. Romance. You like me, I like you. There you oh, go. There you are. Well, don't tell anybody. Don't. Adventure. Da 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 dum, etc. Yeah, that's the whole point. But, 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 yeah. And action. Sergeant shut up. my superstar panel that already at it. The fighting is going to be quite a show. Only on GB News. Britain's watching. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel... Let's return to tomorrow's news site now in our media buzz. More front pages are in. The I reports that UK taxpayers could bail out failing China and Abu Dhabi owned Thames Water, which has paid out billions in dividends to its shareholders despite its £14 billion debt. The Daily Mail also leads on the ongoing NHS doctor strike with an exclusive revelation that medical unions are allowing consultants on £128,000 a year to do private work while on strike days in what the paper is calling a kick in the teeth for patients. And, of course, the main picture there of Madonna, who's been in intensive care and has cancelled her tour, apparently because of a bacterial infection, which is, of course, worrying news uh, for... I'm going to say this, the undisputed queen of pop. And it's sad to see her going through something like this, actually. My superstar panel back with me now, the broadcaster and author Christine Hamilton, the businessman and activist Adam Brooks and GB News senior political commentator Nigel Nelson. Now, the reverberations from the woke TV industry's meltdown continue today as their bitterness at GB News and Nigel Farage sensationally scooping two trick awards went to new levels after unsavoury heckling and booing as Nigel collected that gong yesterday, even the establishment stooges within Trick themselves were unable to hide their contempt at our success and our viewers. They actually deleted the tweet they had initially put out congratulating Nigel on his well-deserved win. It did go back up, uh, but without the sponsor's name in, which is very telling. Nigel, of course, wasn't taking it lying down. Watch. It would seem that all of these people hate the British public 
It's not me they hate, it's the people that voted for me they hate. And that's why the whole thing needs a massive shake-up. GB News will be complaining in the strongest terms. Yeah, very good point. That's the tweet uh, from Susanna Reid lashing out at GB News's very own Andrew Pearce after he declared the win was one in the eye for the establishment, writing in response that today's GMB will be interesting and, as, as promised, uh, sore loser Susanna was still bitter that Nigel pipped her to the award for best news presenter. Look at this. Well, that was the end of a, of a speech which was actually the longest acceptance speech. I'd say it was about five or six minutes long, or maybe it felt like that in the room. Nigel beat you. He did, right. indeed. The only woman on the shortlist. Right. Uh, well... On, actually, a very long shortlist. Yeah. Uh, but congratulations mm. to, uh, to Nigel. But a lot of booze, Kevin. I mean, but he's... he will revel in that. Yeah, yes, he... and he did. Yeah. And to be fair, I think he kind of whipped them up. And then one of the editors at The Independent, Sean O'Grady, posted deranged tweets saying GB News isn't balanced but Channel 4 News is. So the establishment media clearly really struggling with the fact that GB News is in touch with our viewers. Adam Brooks, you actually had a bit of a Twitter row with this bloke at The Independent. Uh, to be fair, I've had a few Twitter rows with Sean O'Grady. He's quite immature with uh, a lot of the tweets that he, mm. he directs in my, you know, in my direction. Well, he obviously but doesn't know what he's talking about if he says that Channel 4 News... I, I did. I, I actually responded with loads of laughing emojis to that statement. But, look, it's glorious to see the meltdown. I mean, the responses to some of my tweets and fellow GB News uh, presenters and contributors' tweets, I was up for about an hour reading and laughing. They do not know how to handle this. And that goes from the lefties to some of the mainstream media sort of bigwigs. They cannot accept that people watch mm. and listen to this channel. And it scares them. Yeah, they want to shut it down. You what know? did you make of Susanna Reid's response, Christine Hamilton? Oh. She wasn't happy about being beaten by Nigel No, Farage. and poor darling, I mean, she was the only woman on the shortlist, so she should have won, <laughs> shouldn't she? Dear that was the God. undertone, wasn't it? I mean, it? that was mind-blogging. Do you know, when, first of all, um, they laughed at GB News, then they tried to ignore GB News. Well, they're not laughing now. And I think, you know, the reaction of the mainstream media has been hilarious. And I mean, now they're trying really to shut us down. Mm. It is much... Well, Literally. And they, mm. they, they try to stop people advertising. There was a concerted attempt to try and stop people mm. advertising in, in, the, in the early days. They're still mm. at it. And I just thought it was absolutely mm. glorious. But Christine, I mean, they is... don't like it up on, do they? No, they don't, but they it don't. is still They've going on. I mean, Nigel, yesterday was booted out. He's a nominee. He was booted out of the pre-reception before the awards that? because of the sponsor, the main headline sponsor. And then today, my suspicion is that the reason that the Trick Awards actually deleted their tweet and then reposted it was because the sponsor, uh, which Nigel has investigated, and it turns out that the sponsor is very woke and uh, the woman behind it has BLM connections, wanted the sponsor's sponsor name is? removed. Yes, I can, but I've forgotten, actually. Oh, I see. I uh, wondered if you were... <laughs> Not no, I'm, I'm not, not being careful. It's not Euronics, is it? No, that, no they were the sponsor of the main right, ones. Okay. That's check appalling, because this is a public vote. The sponsor should have nothing to do with the outcome. They sponsor the event for whatever reason they do, uh, and they should have no truck with who votes for whom and whatever, which programme. It's appalling. Mm. Nigel Nelson, it's very funny. you're obviously <laughs> from the left of politics. But sure here not. you are, working at GB News. Uh, what do your Trade. woke-topians in the MSM and the establishment think about that? Because, honestly, I was in that room yesterday and there was a febrile, nasty atmosphere that went through the room when Nigel was up on the stage delivering some home truths. Yeah, and it was absolutely appalling the way he was treated. Um, uh, as far as my position goes, I'm up, the, the GB News' greatest strength is a genuine commitment to free speech. And the long-in-the-tooth... Um, uh, other TV channels would do well to take take a, a leaf out of our book about how free speech actually works. Mm. It doesn't really work properly, and on BBC, ITV, no. Sky, um, and that's because of the, the of, of trying to keep this 50-50 balance, which just doesn't doesn't cut because um, it means that minority views end up getting a disproportionate amount of airtime. Mm. But the thing is, it's also not true 
because they like to claim that they do the 50-50 thing, but they don't. they don't. Because when I came to GB News, was in the midst of lockdowns, when it was absolutely impossible to get any critic of lockdowns on the BBC or the mainstream media at all, partly because of Ofcom too. By the way, Christine, the, the name of the company uh, that the sponsor of Nigel's awards that wanted to be removed from the tweet is Screen Hits, and the very woke boss is called Rose Atkins Holse. Oh, it's a lady. So but, Dan, you watch next year, they try and change the, the way that mm. these goals oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The are, 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 yeah. are voted for. Well, do you, you know, know what will happen? I can't have this happen They'll again. remove democracy from these yeah. awards now. That's the hilarious thing. Yeah. They'll either ban GB News from taking part of the awards or they will make sure that the votes are decided by a jury rather than the public. Yeah. But the, the British people hate a bad loser and that trick awards audience were disgraceful mm. i almost put them forward as my union jackass but then i haven't um people just do not like that sort yeah. of attitude you know if you lose in this country by yeah. fairly and squarely you take it on the chin yeah. that lot they, well they were so horrified they didn't mm. think yeah. it was going to happen it will gain gb news support of course it will mm. Mm. well it's interesting isn't it nigel comparing this to his brexit campaign mm. now the deteriorating mind of the leader of the free world joe biden might might be something the MSM is definitely prepared to ignore. But come on, we can all see, right, this is getting so much worse by the day. It's serious, and I believe it's providing a real threat now. Mm -hmm. So earlier, Biden actually shouted at a reporter when questioned about his son's questionable activities. Watch. President Biden, how involved, President Biden, how involved were you in your son's Chinese shakedown text message? Were you sitting there? Mr. Were you involved? Were no, you involved? I wasn't. Were, you, and I don't know. Were you? No. Then he mixed up Ukraine and Iraq. Then has Vladimir Putin been weakened by recent events? It's hard to tell, but he's clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home. Clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home. And he has uh, become a bit of a fly around the world. The war in Iraq. The Democrats are thinking of letting this bloke run for another term. That is outrageously irresponsible. And I'm sorry, I have to start thinking. Is it because they want to continue pulling the strings of an unwell OAP who doesn't have his mental faculties intact? Nigel Nelson, Adam Brooks, Christine Hamilton, do stand by because coming up, Johnny Besto has already seen off a sweaty Just Stop oil protest today, but he'll have, have another battle on his hands to win tonight's either Greatest Britain or Union Jackass. We'll find out which. But next, in Uncancelled, as Holly Willoughby swerves the trick awards to avoid the humiliation of losing out to a place in the sun and a reunion with Eamon Holmes, according to an ITV insider, can this morning ever regain its daytime crown after the Philip Schofield scandal, or is it finished? And have British schoolboys found a rare advantage to the gender madness sweeping our schools? Find out with comedy icon. The nation's favourite entertainer, Jim Davidson, who offers his hilarious take. Jim Davidson live with me in just two minutes' time. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the program sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Nightmare Commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's, at drive time, 3 till 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB+, Plus on the Smart Speaker app, and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, 
All you have to say is, Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's, on GB News and GB News Radio. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. It's time for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And I'm delighted to be joined now by the comedy legend, the nation's top entertainer, Jim Davidson. Now, Jim, Holly Willoughby swerved the trick awards yesterday to avoid a run-in with ex-colleague Eamon Holmes, apparently, according to an ITV insider. And it probably was a good thing for her, though, Jim, because she missed the humiliation of this morning losing out to the long-running lifestyle show, A Place in the Sun, as the country's best daytime TV show. So, Jim, will this morning ever regain its crown after the Philip Schofield scandal, or is it finished? Hi, Dan. Well, I've been listening to this with, with great interest today. And, of course, all the booing and all the moaning and the trick awards. There, there's an expression that people from South East London use. It. If anything doesn't work, it's called trick. It's a trick horse. It's a trick car. My car's broke down. It's always been a bit of a trick car, really. It doesn't really do it. it uh, it's fake. It's awful. And this is all these funny people here. And as for Wally Hillaby, well, I mean, just let her go off and have a holiday. I, I, I think it's time for those old-fashioned television programs to look at themselves. This, this is the time for watching television. Uh, uh, do you know... I, 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 absol I was absolutely shocked at the way these lovies all behaved. I mean, mm. well, goodbye, all you lot. It's like watching a load of old dinosaurs. And Holly Willoughby was right, mate. I don't think she's running away from this morning or Schofield. She's running away from all them other people. She doesn't want to be like them. She's gone. Go off, Holly. Have a nice holiday, Holly Willoughby. Willy, 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 Willy. <laughs> well, yes, and obviously, Jim, Nigel Farage actually put two fingers up at that audience yesterday when he won Best News Presenter beating Susanna Reid and Piers Morgan. So uh, here he is being abused by those bitter and twisted lefty lovies as he accepted his award. Watch this. Winner is Nigel. <laughs> you see, the investors, <laughs> please do keep the abuse coming because it says a lot more about This is, I had much louder than this at the European Parliament, sir. I'm disappointed. Bar is wrong, and we need reform of this system. We need, oh, look, there we are. We need the heavies to come. And at that point, he was literally ushered off the stage. Jim, do you think this is a sure sign of jealousy and inferiority from a declining establishment media? I think it's worse than that, Dan. I think it's a sign of fear. And who are those cartoon heavies that came on? I mean, get a look at themselves. This is what daytime television is like on mainstream uh, TV. It's fake. It's glossy. It's neon. Let me just tell you something about GB News and, and my TV program, Ustream. Yes. We've just taken our advertising on GB News and our subscribers and I love have gone up 40%. 40% really? in the last month. After you advertised on GB News? Just it's only, the only place we advertise is on GB News. I'm not going to advertise at all. These and these woke the brands are missing out on that, and though. subscriber growth. Wow, that's astonishing. That is astonishing. But that's these woke true. brands are missing out because they don't want to be on the people's channel because we're not woke. I mean, I find it extraordinary. Well, I, I do love some of the adverts you have on there. There's a lot coming from Wales, doesn't it? And I we think love one our Welsh ads, Jim. I, I, I think Nigel, Nigel's a mate of mine. And the reason yes. he is a mate of mine is because he's a really, really good bloke. 
And don't yeah. forget, this guy is a sort of a politician. He's a people's mm -hmm. hero on the People's Channel. And these Alter Q reading loveys, right, can, can go do one for me. And that's Susanna Reid, who's always got a face like a smack bum, if you ask me. I mean, she should really you'd get up, smell the coffee, look what's going on, and go and get yourself a job in the Women's Institute or something. <laughs> the world's mad. It's gone mad. No, it's Jim. gone mad, mate. And that's all I can say. It has. No, it has. It has. Uh, let's move on to Glastonbury, uh, where Sir Elton John was hailed, actually, as one of the greatest acts to perform at the Very Woke Festival. Look at this. But you spotted something that was a little bit off with that performance, didn't you, Jim? Well, I, th th there was a few things. I mean, Elton is of a certain age. I think he's 76, isn't he? But his hair is 40. And, and, and I, I think want he, his he hair. did look like a <laughs> bit of an oven-ready turkey coming on. And he did have the dodgy old legs that had gone a bit funny. But he did, all, he did all right. And it was yeah. nice to see his old band back. But you have to say what the Duke of Edinburgh said to me once when we had, had lunch. I'm name dropping here, Dan. Do you mean, do you mean, you mean Prince me. Philip, the late Prince Philip? Yeah. Yeah, the late Prince Philip. Yes, of course. Thanks. Thanks, sir, Dan, for that. I'm a bit out of touch, people would say. But he said to me, do you like Elton John? I said, I do very much. And he said, and he said why doesn't he sing in English? And he does. He sort of sings, there's a fine. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, if you try and work out some of Yellow Brick Road, I love that record. Back to the honey back toad. What's a honey back toad? <laughs> what the? What is he talking about? He should speak proper English, like Nigel. Nigel, he's got, his head is. He's gonna. He's gonna work his neck the way he keeps shouting at people. He got like that. It was, I've had worse than this. I have to tell you, I, yes. I, I that Grosvenor is a tough room. Oh, it is yeah. a tough room. Oh, I yeah. guarantee That's you, where the this lot, whoever this woman is, Rose Hinkle Holston, mm. right? If they want to drop their sponsorship, fine, let them go. I'm going to reinvest more money in GB News because it is the people's channel, and and that's the people. That you play to. Yeah, Next that's year, Rose and let's hope the people Oops, still get a vote. Heads. I'm going to take a table there, Dan, and I'm going to watch you get an award. Well, I want to be yes. invited on your table, Jim. That's what that's what I want. I want to be on your table. But look, you can come on my table. You can come anywhere. Maybe I should rephrase that. But but you'll be very welcome. That's what I mean. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Now look, I want to move on to these savvy schoolboys that are exploiting the woke gender rules by wearing skirts to class on hot days because they say they're taking a stand against a sexist ban on shorts and they have their backing of their parents. So, well, what do you think about? Uh, these kids doing this, Jim? Well, first of all, that kid should eat steak and chips three times after meals. He's got to fatten up a bit, that boy. He looks worse <laughs> than the weatherman you got on there. But let me tell you this. I think it's just kids messing around. If the teachers told yeah. us to do anything... I remember our headmaster came on, he was like this, he's talking about COVID nearly. There's a, an epidemic of conjunctivitis. It means your eyes go all red. If any boy has it, They'll be sent home for the week. I turned round. There was 20 kids rubbing their eyes like this. Ready <laughs> yeah. to get the exactly. Off. Kids are there to exploit the rules. I think they're doing the right thing. These gender rules are ridiculous. If they're not able to wear shorts and they're very hot, yeah, then why don't they take the mickey out of them? I've worn a skirt when I was a kid. It was called a kilt. <laughs> yes, indeed, Jim Davidson. Britain's best entertainer. Thank you, Jim. Speak very soon. Love you, man. Love you on Ustream. Uh, time now to reveal today's greatest Britain Union jackass, though. My superstar panel return. Christine Hamilton, who are you nominating as your greatest Briton? Well, it's the great, <clears throat> excuse me, the great late Dame Anne Leslie, who has died last Sunday. She was a feisty, fearless, formidable grand dame of Fleet Street. She wasn't just a columnist. She went to war zones. She covered some of the major events. She was absolutely incredible. And I know it's trite to say it, but we will never see her light again. So she is my greatest Britain. Very sad news. Adam Brooks, your nominee. My nominee is Johnny Bairstow for picking up the <coughs> Just Stop Oil protester from the Lord's cricket pitch. Oh, can we look at it again, please?
<laughs> oh, how good was that, Adam? Bring it was good. I would, have been a, I would have been a lot rougher, to be fair. <laughs> Bring back the streaker. Do you remember him? <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Nelson, your nominee. Yeah, mine's the Princess of Wales for never putting a foot wrong. Uh, she, she was at uh, uh, Southampton Refuge for uh, women uh, who've committed minor offences so they can stay with their children, and she managed to, to, to put down a a perfectly pitched message, which was, I see you, I'm with you, good luck in all that lays ahead. And you can't get much better than that. All great nominees tonight, but I am going to go with Johnny Bairstow because I think he dealt with those Just Stop Oil goons better than most of the police have. Uh, Union Jackass time now, Christine Hamilton. Well, I was spoiled for choice today, I really was. As I say, I was going to go for the Trick Award audience, but I have gone for Lord Deben. Who's he? I could hear people asking in their living rooms. He is John Selwyn Gummer, MP, who was a mediocre minister in John Major's mediocre government. And he is now the chairman of the Chi okay. Climate Change Committee, which is a government quango. He goes to Glastonbury and he actually says protesters ought to make themselves nuisance in every circumstances they can. These people are desperate. Yes, these climate change people are desperate because idiots like you have been peddling all this nonsense okay. and made them frightened. Adam Brooks, your nominee. My nominee is the Trick Awards oh. <laughs> uh, for deleting Nigel Farage's winning announcement. They really let themselves down. And Nigel Nelson, your nominee. Yeah, it's the, out, uh, the outgoing chief executive of Thames Water, Sarah Bentley. She's been paid one and a half million pounds for presiding over a complete shit show. Well said. <laughs> You're allowed to say that at this time. Uh, I am going to go with Adam Brooks and the Trick Awards, of course over uh, what they did today, taking down that tweet. Adam Brooks, Christine Hamilton, Nigel Nelson, thank you all so much. Thank you for your company tonight. I'll be back again from 9pm tomorrow. Lady Colin Campbell, Phil Dampier in the house, so too is Calvin McKenzie and Anne Whittakim. Next up, though, it's headliners. Good night. Like all families, we have arguments every now and then, but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is, and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast. Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Nightmare Commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's, at drive time, 3 till 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB+, Plus on the Smart Speaker app, and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, all you have to say is, Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's, on GB News and GB News Radio.
So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate, both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. And the top story tonight, the wreckage from the ill-fated Titan submersible has been recovered from the seabed of the North Atlantic and brought ashore for the very first time. New pictures show metal debris being unloaded from the Horizon Arctic ship in St John's in Newfoundland by the Canadian Coast Guard. If you're listening on radio, uh, the pictures are showing on television show wiring coming from a tail cone. The titanium end caps of the submersible, the landing frame that was found first and the porthole. The sub imploded an hour and 45 minutes into its descent to view the wreckage of the Titanic. On the 18th of June, all five souls on board perished after the sub suffered a catastrophic implosion. Now, in other news today, Thames Water says it's working constructively with its shareholders to secure funding amid mounting concern over its financial stability. Contingency plans are reportedly being drawn up by the government, including possible emergency nationalisation of the company. It's feared Thames Water, Britain's biggest water supplier, is £14 billion in debt. Environment Minister Rebecca Powell says their 15 million customers should rest assured their water supplies will be protected. Ofcom has launched an investigation into BT after disruption to the 999 emergency call service at the weekend. The communications watchdog says it's going to look into the incident to find out whether or not the telecommunications giant failed to comply with its regulatory duties. Emergency calls in some areas were unable to connect to an operator for a few hours. BT, which manages the 999 phone system, apologised sincerely for the UK-wide disruption, the company taking nearly three hours to tell the government there was a problem. Let's bring you up to date with events in Paris, where rioting has entered a second day after a 17-year-old delivery driver was shot dead by police at a traffic stop. 31 people have been arrested so far in the clashes that have followed that incident, with 2,000 police officers being deployed to the streets. Protesters have burnt out cars and buildings. Footage on social media shows two officers...